Let's talk about one of my favourite Manchester United players at the moment. And Kobe Mainu is up there. I like Kobe Mainu. But I think there's a bastard in Lissandro Martinez that I am just drawn to. I grew up watching Eric Cantona and it was a red mist and a dark side to him that was undeniable. And there was a level of quality that was also undeniable. And Lissandro Martinez to me has those sorts of traits about him. And also we miss him when we don't have him. Do me a favour, if you are new around here, then go hit the subscribe button and uh, and really help support the channel. I appreciate it if you do that. Uh, right, Lissandro Martinez coming back into the Manchester United side after recovering from injury is absolutely crucial if we're not going to shit the bed uh, this season. And if we're going to claw back some of the distance that the teams at the top have put between us and themselves. Getting top four is a must this season. And I think we're unlikely to actually do it. But you've got to try. You can't just go, it's a waste of time. You've got to try. You've got to try and get there. And you've got to try and build some momentum towards the end of the season. Because it's possible. It's just hard. Um, and United have missed, in particular with Martinez, the defensive um, powers, the uh, intelligent positioning, the the calmness that he exudes and, and sort of seeps into the rest of the defence. His ball-playing abilities are... Oh, I forgot. I forgot. Watching him on uh, on the weekend against Spurs, just remembering you don't have to pass to only the next line. You can break it. You can go into the forward line. That was a massive one for us. And he's th that's a skill set that's totally lacking in the rest of the squad. His return doesn't just strengthen us defensively. It gets the ball from back to front quicker. There's composure. There's leadership. There's a fucking shit house in there, more importantly. We can surely hope to see... Improved defensive performances now. No, Luke Shaw's almost getting back to full fitness, but I think wan Saka and Delo are doing all right. Um, I don't think they're doing an obvious weakness in the team at the moment. Martinez and Varane really shows us up. Really shows us up. Now, if we look at what he brings to the team, Martinez passing through the lines is just brilliant. Honestly, it's throwback. You know, it, it's literally throwback to the days of having Rio Ferdinand just fucking fizzing it straight into Rooney's feet. You know, and whenever he does that pass, either into midfield or into the forward lines, it's crisp, it's got a right weight on it, it's to the correct foot, which is so important. And it allows the receiver to just take one touch and be on the half turn already and start progressing the ball up the pitch. It's not too late, he's not took five touches, he's not thought about going here, thought about going here, thought about going here, thought about going back here, and then eventually played it back to what the first option was anyway. Like Kobe Mainu, it comes into him and it's gone. And it doesn't necessarily matter if it comes back again straight away. It's just that quick decisiveness just keeps the, the opposition moving. And while they're moving, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're not set and they're not getting rigid. And sometimes someone feels drawn to him. It really matters to just keep that ball moving as much as possible. And you know, having him as part of our build-up means that we can start trying to turn what seemingly difficult situations into real promising ones. We had a, you know, we, we went into the crucible against Tottenham because Tottenham pressed with six and they're fucking good at it. You know, they went and got a result at the Emirates. They got a result at the Etihad. They got a result at Old Trafford. And a lot of that is because they make you uncomfortable in your half. And out of those three teams, United are probably the worst at playing out. And we fucking struggled against Tottenham. But having Martin as back in a team, it means you've got someone who will seriously take that ball under pressure and start moving it in to the areas where it's going to start being a problem for that opposition. You know, and for all the talk about him being five foot summer, you know, he uses that frame and that low center of gravity to full effect. You know, he shifts his body so quickly, it allows him to get out of tight situations, opens up passing angles. You know, there's a sometimes like a variety energy to him when he's on the ball. Just you ain't going to get him off it. You can't bounce him off it. You can't muscle him off it. He's just going to keep turning you and rolling and then get the ball away and then make himself available for the next pass where you're like, fucking, I've got to press him again. You know, there's such a fluidity and confidence and almost arrogance with the way he takes the ball. It changes everything about the way United's build-up play looks. And when United can't bypass a press from the opposition um, by playing in between the lines... Lissandro's got that ability to just fuck the lines off. All right, cool. Watch this. Pinpoint delivered chips or line-breaking passes that are on the floor. You know, lofted balls in behind. You know, 
we've seen him and Casemiro bring this to the table and we've missed it so badly. You know, United haven't got the ball quickly to that forward line. Why haven't the forwards been able to score? Because by the time it gets to them, the entire defence is there waiting for them. You know, when you get the ball forward and be a little bit more direct about it, you start seeing the ball arriving into forwards where they're able to convert something into it. You watch the amount of goals our forwards get just start to rise and then wonder how it's took for a defender to come and do that. Ten Hag likes to create overloads in the final third. Uh, he does that to try and disrupt the opposition defensive shape. A lot of people's defensive principle is plus one, okay? So that means they need to always have an extra defender than you've got an attacker. If you put a forward three up against them, they have to play a back four. If you put four up against them, that's where Bruno would drift in sometimes. Now they've got to pull a defensive midfielder out, and that's where you can start overloading in the midfield area and then picking your passes and, and using you know the, the pace and dribbling ability of the forwards that we've got to be able to create openings and score some goals. That's what we've struggled with a little bit. You know, we see United trying to do this by line up in last season it was a 3-1-6 and this season it's been more like a, a 3-2-5 and I think a lot of that is because we haven't had the reliability of a Martinez um, and obviously that 3-1-6 does leave us open to counter-attacks but once Martinez is back in with the level of aggression and the reading of the game that he brings you know he's so aggressive he's on the front foot defending he steams out there blocks an opposition or gets right onto someone and disrupts them he plays like we used to talk about Mason Greenwood hitting the ball at a weird rhythm when because you know football's played in this sort of dance where everyone kind of knows you know this this is the answer. And when I pull my foot back and shake my body up like this, I'm going to pass this and you're going to receive this. And it's almost like there's unwritten rules to the game. And then you have people that come in and do weird stuff. Lionel Messi is an example. His dribbling was fucking weird. Yo, know, Iniesta's passing tempo was fucking weird. Yo, know, Busquets' uh, body shape movements. It's fucking weird. Um, and when people do things like that, it takes the game so such a long time to be able to come in. And Mason Greenwood's shooting tempo, he hits it almost on a half step. And it wrong foots keepers. Keepers you know, know how to shape up for someone that's shaping up. They're watching for hip cues and, and foot lift cues. And when you lift a, when you hit a ball without so much bat lift and you hit it early in the rhythm, keepers like, shit, and the legs are crossed over. And that's why you see so many of the times that like Mason Greenwood hits the ball and it's in the back of the net and the keeper's like, I didn't think he was even going to shoot that. Mine has got the same sort of thing going on. Like... There's a rhythm. I'm supposed to shoulder, shoulder charge you at this point. I'm supposed to dive in for a tackle at this point. You don't do that. He fucking bumps him and does mad shit and pulls the shirt. All sorts of weird things. And he's an excellent one when challenging in the air because he's so short. He's had to learn to do this sneaky shit that he does. It's the open web of the hand in the hip or the crease of the back just at the right moment. And one hand isn't a foul. Two hands is a foul. You'll know that. One hand ain't a foul. And just sometimes, just as they just as they take the weight off their planted heels, just fucking shove them out of the way a little bit, and it's enough to disrupt them. It's fucking genius bit of using of the dark arts. And uh, one of the reasons I love him, it's that dirty aggression. I'm fucking so here for it. And that means that when United win possession, we regain possession more often and stop the opposition from creating as many opportunities in that transition. That means you can start, and then coupled with how good he is at moving it back straight into the forward line rather than just sideways. It means we sustain attacks, we tire opposition out, we control more games, we have more shots, we concede less goals, we score more goals. Lissandro uses that aggressive nature to win duels against players who are taller, um, against players who are quicker. Like, he just, he's more than the sum of his parts. You know, he seems to have this sixth sense about how to deal with players in those types of situations. And sometimes it boils over. But some of the best players I've ever seen in a United shirt, Canton Keen, Vidic, they had as many red cards as they had 10 out of 10 performances, and we loved them for it. And Martinez is in that mould. You know, he can be the cornerstone of United's build-up play and aggressive off-the-ball approach. The difference between United this season and last season, it seems far too simplistic to say 3-1-6 last year, 3-2-5 this year. But there's an element of that being a case. Not the case, but a case. You know, Marcus not hitting form, Bruno disappearing, all of the injuries, they're all factors, as is that we've had to change our formation to deal with the, the new places that we find ourselves in. There is a reliance, and maybe it's an over-reliance on Martinez from Ten Hag. It's no coincidence when he was injured last season and this season, United look fucking dog poo. 
desperate to bring in a player that can replicate that. Maybe in Varane's position. You know, and he was like the first signing. Like he he was so desperate to get him in. He's tasked him with being like the primary ball handler in the back line. He is the key cog in our first phase of build up. The only centre half that you can reliably see stepping up into midfield. We've seen Mar- uh, we've seen Varane doing it a little bit, but Martinez is the guy that excels at it. You know, it was clearly going to be the plan this season. Hopefully, he's back, and hopefully, everything I've just said was accurate because he could really be transformative for us in the second half of the season. Let me know your thoughts. See you in a bit. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.